So chapter four of Sidman talks about punishment. So pretty much punishment is interpreted to to mean to control others. It means to discourage another person from performing behaviors repeatedly. Um, so when we punish, we want people to act differently. We want to stop or prevent particular actions that are, that are considered bad for the community. Um, so in order to do this, we, re we remove positive reinforcers and use negative reinforcers. Another topic talked about in this chapter was justice. Justice um, has come to mean punishment. So, but is this the only way, to, uh, effective way to control behavior? So this, this chapter discusses about capital punishment and um, like that's obviously stops, that's a way of punishment that stops, you know, behavior. But, um, you know, things like, you know, putting people in jail, they can still commit crime behind bars. This chapter also talks about correlations. So it talks about, um, it brings up an example, if murders happen in states where capital punishment is forbidden, um, does that mean capital punishment is necessary? So it says, because of correlation, it says no, murder can be related to other things such as a depressed economy. And um, it also talks about correlations and says that just because two events are correlated does not mean it's caused by one another, like one causes the other. Um, so next section that was discussed in this book is, in this chapter, was experiments. So it talks about taking baseline data um, when, when an animal, an experiment, is reinforced and then um, punished. So this talks about a rat and when food is given to it and then um, the reinforcement from this at, uh, at a baseline level. Um, and then once it change when once the rat is given a given a punisher, they um, so they analyze if behavior um, varies. So the punishers being used are shock. So the chapter says that shock shock is uh, general generalizable generalizable. So. Across species, um, shock is generalized um, across behaviors and settings. So shock is applied with automatic devices. The time between the act and consequence, action and consequence is very crucial. So this is why shock is a good punisher because it's very effective and instant. Um, another thing discussed in this chapter, though, when talking about things like punishers, are ethics. So, um, technical, they use the word, the phrase technical adequacy. So shock must be delivered. Um, or shock must be both scientifically and morally guided. Um, next section talks about, um, conformity conformity to contingencies. So when a rat presses the lever, um, it gets food um, for this labor. This is called this is positive reinforcement. Um, eventually the contingency changes. If so when the contingency changes an animal gets shocked every time for pressing the lever, um, which is punishment, um, the the rat will briefly stop pressing the lever, lever of stop this behavior, you know, this contingency. Um, eventually the motivation to get the food, though, outweighs this punisher. So then the rat presses the lever despite the shock. Um, so punishers te temporarily, this, this shows that temp um, punishers temporarily stop activity, but it cannot completely extinguish um, you know, something. It cannot 
extinguish it, your contingencies. Um, because the motivation for something like food is very high. And so, in this, ex uh, in the experiments has shown that rats would rather get shocked just to get food. Which is crazy. Um, so, next section is punishments, effectiveness in society. Um, so, punishment, and, and this justice, um, idea um it causes repeated criminality the way that i guess justice is handled in our society people repeatedly um, um are you know do crime because of it so shocks shocks in society do not punish in a way that changes behavior um cruel and unusual punishment so that's why like other societies practice cruel and an unusual punishment. Um, it, you know, the intensity of that definitely will may have a greater impact on um, st stopping contingencies. Um, t um, another way that punishment can be done is you take advantage of, um, you know, the brief halt in doing. An activity when someone is doing when someone halts a, a, contingen a contingency um, take advantage of that time between you know when they halt and then when they're going to start again um, but and you can do this by teaching them a new way of a different contingency um, like for example in the rat you can teach them a different way to get food um, you could teach a rat that instead of pressing a lever, you can, um, that a chain can dispense food. Um, and while, you know, and then eventually, and as long as the uh, rat gets the food, it won't go to the lever anymore. Which is the former contingency that led to, a, a, like, a life of crime. Um, so mild punishment is useful in times when taking advantage of teaching a new way to obtain reinforcers. Um, the one last section talks about punishers as reinforcing, which is very interesting. So when painful things are paired with something highly motivating, um, something that was punishing may lose its effectiveness as a punisher. So a rat shocked before receiving food, um, you know, um, it will be punishing at first, um, but um, sometimes our certain experiments have shown that um, the rat will just continually press a like lever, even though. It's keeps being shocked even though food isn't being dispensed um the food or food is removed and the shock remains but um even as the um even when this happens the rat continues to press a lever because um it's been paired with something highly motivating like food and eventually the shock itself becomes something that's a reinforcer um even when increase in intensity is still a reinforcing thing for certain rats um, shocks may be thought to be punishing um, when actually it might be reinforcing for some rats. This um, this is the same. This is shown rats and even people in society thrive on punishment. Um, so, for example, uh, someone, a child or an adult who has autism. Uh, may self-injure just to receive attention because this is um, has been positively re reinforced by parents and other people who might be a big influence in that person's life. So two ways to punish are, this is the last section, two ways to punish. You give a strong shock to really stop a behavior fast, you know, the, the, uh, increase the intensity to halt a contingency for hopefully a long time. 
but um, yeah, this is uh, a question of whether this is ethical or not. <laughs> um, so, or you can mildly punish and then teach a new contingency between the time when um, the behavior, behavior is halted and when, you know, you do it quick enough, teach quick enough before they're going to return to that contingency. Um, ch ch the chapter, chapter four states that, um, so chapter four states that that the strong shock is um, not recommended. <laughs> the strong intensity that um, teaching a new behavior is recommended. Thank you for watching my video.